Hey all you heroes, hawks, heralds, crows, pirates, and wardens. Welcome to the Dragon Age Lorecast, where we unpack, discuss, and galaxy brain about all the lore behind the Dragon Age series. We are so excited to bring you this podcast. Every episode, we'll be talking about a different topic in the Dragon Age universe, from character deep dives to exalted marches and elven gods. We will cover it all. There will be spoilers. And always remember, swooping is bad. Hello and welcome to the Dragon Age Lorecast, where we talk about all things Dragon Age and its lore. I'm one of your hosts, Austin, also known as Teacup. And I'm your other host, Shelby or Sheikup. And we are here to talk about Dragon Age with our lovely patrons. It is our patron chat, and so I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. I am LVCC13, or Liz, Lizzie, Elizabeth, any variation thereof. Hey, uh, happy to be here. Uh, I'm Mac, MacMan813 in the Discord. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome, welcome. And then also we have with us uh, Capricorn Tower. Yep, Lou, also known as Nick. And so we are here to talk about companion dialogues, our favorite part of these games, and the only reason the Hissing Wastes are a visited region in Dragon Age Inquisition is for companion dialogue. That's true. Um, Before we get started into our kind of discussion of what our favorite companion dialogue is i just want to remind everyone out there that we vote on topics all of the patrons get a vote not just patrons that show up um so if you want to vote on what we talk about you should absolutely join the patreon you can join at like the lowest tier which is five dollars a month And you still get to vote. And so this month is the first time ever we've had a tie, um, which I just thought was really funny. So this this month we're talking about what's your favorite dialogue between companions. And then next month we'll talk about the other option, which I will tell you next month. You'll just have to wait unless you want to become a patron and then you can you can uh, become a patron and log in and figure out what uh, the poll said. So, yeah, let's get started. So I kind of thought um, we could, and usually what we do is like Lizzie goes and then Nick goes and whatever, and then you just have your turn. But since I asked y'all to bring more than one dialogue, I thought we could just kind of pop around and share like one at a time and then come back and go back and forth. So um, yeah, whoever wants to start can start. Um, I One of my, my favorite character, top five favorite characters in Dragon Age is Isabella. She has some of the, my favorite dialogue in the series. And uh, what, this is just an example of why I love her. She's very confident and funny, and I appreciate that a lot about her. Uh, this is Isabella talking to Abilene. So how good is Donic? Is he cocksure? Ask Isabella. Abilene, just get out of your system. Did he curl your toes, put in your peak, dampen your divine, cadice your Kate? Praise your maker, explore your deep roads, gray your warden. How about to satisfy a demand of your coon? Yes, all right. He's an incredibly proficient lover. Happy? Whoa, that's a little personal. I, I just love that silly banter that happens a lot in Dragon Age 2. Yeah, I wrote that one down. <laughs> My favorite part is the shank your jewelry because it's an Easter egg and also a euphemism. Yeah, that one's definitely iconic. Um I'm I'm partial to Gray or Warden personally. I don't know if the um, others of y'all have favorites of that little quote, but that was just hilarious. I'm a little concerned about what Gray your Warden means. Like, look, we look, can't don't say on the show. Don't take it we literally. We cannot say on the show. <laughs> we can't say it. <laughs> I'm partial to satisfy your dem- the demand of your cune, just in retrospect. Especially given Bull's romance in uh, context to that. I, of course, decided to not write it down, to just go to the YouTube videos of the quote. Why are you smiling like that? You look suspiciously like the cat that swallowed the pigeon. 
I look like the cat that swallowed the canary. I once had a very large cat, but not my point. My point is, why are you smirking? <laughs> you were watching her with great interest, I might add. In fact, I believe you were enraptured. She's our leader. I look to her for guidance. Oh, I see. So what guidance did you find in those swaying hips? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I wasn't looking at, you know, her <laughs> hind quarters. Certainly. I gazed, glanced in that direction, maybe. But I wasn't staring or really seeing anything, even. Of course. I hate you. You're a bad person. Not the one I intended, but yes, that's my other favorite one. Alistair and Wynn. That's the one I get a lot since I usually romance him. The, part, the best punchline is you're a bad person. You're <laughs> a bad person. I will say I, something I noticed in my um, research, because there was an Alistair one specifically that I, I knew of that I was like, I want this one, but I don't remember the full thing. So I was looking up dialogue. There are a lot of instances of people making fun of Alistair where his reaction is just, I hate you. Please go away. <laughs> Which just makes me cackle personally that he's the butt of everyone's joke. It's because he makes it so easy. True. Very true. All right. I'll go next because I have one that's not funny. <laughs> of course you do. But that's sad. So I have one that's sad. One of my favorite. I love the Dorian Cole relationship. Um, and it is one of my favorite things in all of Dragon Age and one of my favorite companions. Uh, and so here's the one that just is a knife in my heart every single time. Um, so, Cole. Dorian, you said I could ask you questions. Dorian, it's true. I did say that. Why are you so angry at your father? He wants to help, it, and you know he does, but... Dorian, I'm not certain I can explain it to you. Cole, you love him, but you're angry. They mix together, boiling in the belly until it kneads into a knot. Dorian, sometimes, sometimes love isn't enough, Cole. I just like that one. It's really good interpersonal writing. It's very simple. It stabs you right there. I had to stop playing the game when I heard that. I was like, that's enough Dragon Age for today. Thanks for mean. breaking all of our hearts. That was so rude of you. We we're mean, like, mean, okay. mean. <laughs> it just goes back to the writing is so good. In they they really know what they're doing with each character. They really have a plan for each character. And they they execute it perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nick, do you want to go next? Uh, yeah, I suppose I could do that. Um, yeah, that was one of the ones that I had put down as well. Um, because I was just like, oh, I get that. Um, but um, I guess <laughs> most of mine are from Inquisition. But one that always makes me uh, laugh is when Dorian and Varric are talking. And Dorian asks if Varric and Cassandra have uh, done something together. Satisfy their <laughs> demands of the cube. Yes, that. And then Varric is just like, just because two people dislike each other doesn't mean they're about to kiss. And I was like, Bioware knows their audience. They're talking to us through this dialogue. Really, Varric? That's not what your books say. <laughs> and the shippers broke, put down their pins all at once. I just have to say, I feel very attacked right now. <laughs> personally um but yeah no that's fair my response to Varric is do you dislike each other do you detest each other like I don't think that's true or is it all just an act mm -hmm. I think there's genuine like friendship and love there especially by the end Obviously. yeah they're work married but can they be real married though I mean, oh, I'm not, saying, not in it my depends canon. on your playthrough. Not in my <laughs> canon. I romance Fair. Cassandra every time, most of the time. 
Well, those of us who play girls can't do that. And it's very unjust, I have to say. You know, Varric knows the way to Cassandra's heart. I mean, he writes the romance novels that she's obsessed with. So obviously she knows what he knows what she wants out of love and a relationship. Fair points. Fair points. I wonder how um, mad Aveline's going to be when she discovers that he wrote another chapter of that particular series <laughs> that's based on her and Tonic. Probably very, if I had to guess. Um, I, yeah. I just want to say that Varric probably may or may not, but most definitely did, get punched in the throat when he returned to Kirkwall. For sure. Like, definitely. Or maybe need in the throat, because I don't think Aveline would, like, reach down to do that. <laughs> she drop kicked yeah. him down the steps of the keep. All right. Well, I also have a quote, another one from Inquisition. I do have other ones like with Cassandra, of course, as you all know. Um, But this one is between Blackwall and Solas, which is kind of a dark horse. But this always, always makes me laugh. So Blackwall says, Elf Root. Do elves just call it Root? Solas says, no, we have another name for it. And then Blackwall says, well, that's no fun. And Solus replies with, you spend too much time with Sarah. <laughs> I mean, where is the lie? I know or- he's got he's got a point. Um, cool. Well, let's go around again. We don't have to go in the same order or anything. Maybe, Nick, do you want to go next so nobody steals another one of the quotes you brought? Yes, uh, sure. Um, I had to bring this one up. Uh Dorian and Sarah are two that I love bringing literally everywhere because of their banter. But um, this one in particular, uh, Sarah, do me a favor, Dorian. Give me some warning if you're about to bust out in demons or something. Dorian laughs. (laughs) How do you picture me busting out? I'm walking around and oops, demon. I mean, it could happen despite my training. You could also trip and pin your eye on an arrow. Sarah, so are you going to warn me or not? Dorian, certainly, but only because I hold you. You are so dear to me. That's a good one. I feel like I feel like there's a follow-up dialogue. I may be wrong, but I feel like there's a follow-up dialogue with Bull, like if he's there and, and Dorian are in a romance about following up on the like busting out line. I don't know if that's accurate, but I feel like I remember something vaguely to that effect. Now we have to Google that because that sounds hilarious. <laughs> I've got the Dragon Age video, Inquisition video pulled up. I'll look for it later. <laughs> okay. You'll have to keep us updated. I'll go next because I owe you a funny one after ripping your hearts out. Yes, so you obviously, do. Obviously, this is between Isabella and Penris, which is obviously just a great pairing. Uh, Izzy, I enjoy a man with markings like that. Penris, you've enjoyed many, I suspect. Isabella, where I come from, they're called tattoos. Sailor get, sailors get them all the time. Penris, not made of lyrium, I'd imagine. Isabella, not a one, and the pictures are different, usually breasts. Fenris, I suppose a pair of lyrium breasts tattooed on my chest would make things better. Isabella, that's me. I'm a helper. (laughs) Uh, I just, um, I go back and forth between Fenris and Isabella's relationship because I think it can be problematic, but that one always makes me laugh, Um, especially since it happens, I think it happens in act two. And so they've spent some time together. So like, whereas like, it's not that Fenris is like joking at his like suffering or anything, but he's understanding the humor in the situation of like Isabella's understanding and just said, yeah, like. That's fair. Um, Lizzie, was that the one that you had pulled up or did you have a different one? I have a different one about tattoos and this one's with Alistair and Zevran. And I, I completely forgot this one existed because I never bring Alistair and Zevran out together in Dragon Age Origins. I don't know why, because they're hilarious, but I usually go for Liliana when I've got Alistair in my party. Probably because I'm being a goody two-shoes in that, usually. But here it is. 
I've been thinking about those ink drawings. What do you call them? Uh, uh, tattoos? Are you still willing to do one? Oh, you decided to take the plunge, have you? What is your little pen, am I right? I'm not worried about that. I think they look interesting. Though, I, I'd want mine smaller. When can you do it? <laughs> not so fast, my friend. There is an entire ritual to how this is done, do you not know? First, I need to bathe you in a mixture of olives and rose water. You need to bathe me? That seems odd. No, 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 not at all. It needs to be worked into your skin, preparing it to receive the ink. The massage is quite pleasurable. Do not worry. You are in good hands. The m m m massage? You're, you're having me on, aren't you? I might be. I might not be. Shall I describe the rest of the ritual to you? Hmm. No, no. On second thoughts, I'll just pass. <laughs> Excellent choice. So, yeah. That, 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 if uh, Zevran and Alistair would ever have gotten together, like we were talking a couple patron chats ago, that would have been the moment if Alistair had said yes. That's hysterical. I've never heard that one. Just Zevran being our favorite chaotic neutral rogue. I just love Zevran for a lot of reasons that like similar to Isabella, like and Sarah, all of them kind of fit this archetype here is that when they realize that you're uncomfortable with something, they're just going to continue to push into it and dial down into that. And that makes me laugh every time. They are, they do all have that quality. That is, that is true. Um, well, I, I have another one that's kind of uncommon. I had never heard this one before I started doing research. So this one occurs if you bring Cassandra and Iron Bull in the party together, which I think most people probably don't do two warrior parties. I do sometimes, but that's maybe why I didn't have never heard this one. So Cassandra says demons, dragons, and even dark spawn. Now Kunari, I wonder if we will ever run out of things to fight. Iron Bull says, now I'm thinking about dragons and I'm even more depressed. And Cassandra says, the dragons were amazing, weren't they? And Iron Bull says, they really were. Cassandra says, I never really understood my homeland's fascination with dragons until the Inquisition. I suppose I am Navarin after all. And Iron Bull says, you don't like corpses, though. Maybe you're a Cunari. And then Cassandra laughs, um, which I, again, had never heard that one. I just really appreciated it, especially if you've ever heard the dialogue where Iron Bull flirts with Cassandra and she says something about it. And he's like, oh, I'll stop, whatever. And she's like, oh, no, you don't have to stop just as long as you know it's never going to happen. So I like their friendship a lot. I do, too. Um, and I did bring this one. But there's another one between Cassandra and Bull, especially if you've romanced Cassandra. And Bull is like talking to her. He's like, oh, you've been distracted. You're, oh, you're a little distracted. And he goes, you're probably staring at that inquisy butt. Another iconic one for sure. Kind of along those lines. I, uh, it's not like out in the world dialogue, but the post fade segment of Inquisition when Cassandra's beating, up, beating Bull up with the stick. And then he's like, this is why the Kuhn doesn't like women fighting. And she's like, okay. And just knocks him out. That's the friendship. And I, I, I approve. Absolutely agreed. Um, so Mac, I don't think you've gone a second time. Do you have another one to share? Uh, sure. Um, I have two. Do you want heartwarming or funny? Because I. Your choice. All right. Um, I'll go heartwarming. Um, this is between Coal and Iron Bull. And I appreciate this one a lot because it's, it really shows like the depth of Cole's, I don't want to say humanity and just kindness, and but, you know, just how deep his empathy goes um, and just caring for others. You and, it's Cole talking about, you and Krim say words that hurt, but they aren't real, the Iron Bull. Iron Bull, he says, yes, we give each other grief. It's a soldier thing. doesn't mean anything. Cole says, it means friendship and that you're soldiers. Krim likes it. It makes him proud. Iron Bull says, I guess I can see that. Him, huh? Cole, is that wrong? 
no, no, I just thought since you do that thing where you see into people's heads. Actually, you're a good kid. Keep it up. And Cole says, the armor is right, the body isn't, but it doesn't hurt him anymore. You make it better. I just thought that is so heartwarming and like for nice and just makes you fe- feel all touchy-feely. It's so great. Another reminder, Bioware, that we need Krem as a companion in DAD. I think you might be waiting on that one, Austin. I I can, just like you, who wear sandals in February to try to will it to be warm, I'm going to will Krem as a companion. All right, that's fine. I for sure, though, thought you were going to say something about sandal, like from Dragon Age sandal. And so I was like, I'm confused. <laughs> was the uh, i'm you've talked about her probably a lot in the podcast but i'm only halfway through it right now what is the name of the trans woman who works it was a magister in the uh, imperium i can't remember her name off the top of my head lizzie's itching go ahead avaris mm-hmm. Talani, dorian's bestie i would be yes. so happy if she is part of the she is part of the party she is a party yes. member and maybe a romance option i would love that yeah, that would be amazing. I this is a hot take. I'm not sure I want her as a um romance option and that's because in the comics she's like so in love with her husband who died um who's also Varric's cousin and so I don't know if I want her as a romance option but I definitely support that uh her being a companion for sure. Um but let's go to our midbreak. Ah, Hawk stepped in the poopy. I love you. Want a sandwich? All this for me. No, I didn't get Alexius anything. Send him a fruit basket. Everyone loves those. Hello and welcome to the Miller Show, where we talk about all things about the podcast, but not about the lore of Dragon Age. And it's here where we thank our patrons, like the ones we have here with us. And if you want to join us on Patreon. You can do that by going to patreon.com slash VA Lorecast and signing up for various tiers. If you sign up for the first Enchanter tier or higher, you can come on these episodes of the show. Uh, With this special thank you to our first patrons, Lisa M and Genesis, a special thank you to our divine tier patron kit, and the very, very special thank you to our Nug King, Lewis H., who gets a special thank you. And so again, you can sign up at patreon.com slash DA Lorecast. You can also support us by leaving ratings and reviews on Apple or Spotify. If you leave us some kind words and a five-star review, we will read it out on a future episode of the show. So we do have a review to read today, and this one is from Eris on Spotify comments. If you weren't aware, you can leave comments on Spotify now. Um, It shows up in the like interact Q&A kind of thing um, on the episode page. So this one is on the Alistair episode. And Eris said, I love Ali Bear and the deep dive you do into all the characters always helps see them in a totally different light. I mean, he was always my best friend, but now I can't live without him. Completely agree. Thank you so much uh, for leaving that awesome review. Yeah, thank you for the review support. You can also join us on Discord and hang out with us there. We can find our lovely patrons and chat with us at the Cups Podcasting and more Discord server. And you can join us there. Links in the episode description. And I believe that's all I have for the middle of the show. <laughs> Up there, giant icicle tits. Ice tittles. You're looking for titsicles. Oh, that's good. Yes, and it's a real nice night for an evening. Um... <laughs> oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you. Yes, swooping is bad. All right, well, let's get back into it. I don't know who wants to go next. Who hasn't gone first? I'll I'll get the feels out of the way because I have another one with the feels. Um, So this is between Anders and Fenris. And it is one of my favorite dialogue companions because it sums up the relationship and the tension between the two characters perfectly. Anders. 
By now, you must see what an injustice the Templars are. Fenris, must I? I see the Templars trying to control what they have good reason to fear. Anders, but they go too far. Fenris, talk to Hawk about their mother. Ask them who went too far. Anders, you can't hold all mages responsible for that. Fenris, it doesn't take all mages to cause this. Only the weak ones. Anders, not all mages are weak. And then the response depends on who is, what type of hawk you have. But I like Bethany, so we're going with that. Fenris, Bethany, for instance, was not weak. Anders, you specifically don't mention me. Fenris, that is also true. Anders, I'll prove to you that I'm not weak. Fenris, prove it to yourself. You're convincing no one else. Picture that gif of every of all the group of like teenagers going, oh, after Fenris <laughs> drops that. Emotional damage. It but, really is such an insult. Like it is probably the hardest cut you could probably deal to Anders. And it foreshadows a lot because you're like, he's like, I, I will show you I'm strong. He does. Anders does what Anders does. I view this and I interpret this as actually Fenris trying to care for Anders. I view it as Fenris saying like, dude, you're going down a dark path and you're going to become something that you're trying to fight against. You're being weak. And Fenris is rough around the edges. So that doesn't come across as helpful, but I think it is him trying to be helpful in his own way. Can we move on from Anders? No, no, you opened the can of worms. <laughs> I did not. You did by bringing in Anders' quote. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to call on Lizzie to go next. Okay. I think we need a palate cleanser. So I'm going to yes. play a lovely little Dorian and Iron Bull thing that I love so much. <laughs> Prepare your ears. I'm just saying, Dorian. You carry around this picture of the canary in your mind. Like you see us as this forbidden, terrible thing, and you're inclined to do the forbidden. I have no idea what you're talking about. All I'm saying is, you ever want to explore that, my door's always open. You are impossible. This is... Oh, good. I like that energy. Stoke those fires, big guy. So... That's it. Ships have sailed. <laughs> this from my, my canon p- playthrough, my first major playthrough. I ro- I did I uh, didn't do the Iron Bull quest to get his loyalty, mm-hmm. like in fear. You know what I mean. And went and but he, and and the last trespasser mission, I brought Iron Bull. And Dorian. So Iron Bull turned in the heartbreak and sadness on Dorian broke me. I was ow. <laughs> the pain. Which is why we saved the chargers and there's no other option. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, Austin, do you remember what the percentage of people who saved the chargers were in our um, Dragon Age survey? Um, I am not sure the percentage, but I remember, I distinctly remember that the only, per- the only question that had a larger, like, swing one way was, do you sell Fenris into slavery? I don't think that's true, because I think the um, dark ritual was also higher. Oh, maybe. Who wants to go next? I suppose I'll go. So this one is uh, Sarah and Solas, um, and kind of bringing in some other things that are kind of, what's the word, drizzled, I guess, throughout <laughs> the dialogue in the game. But uh, so this one is uh, Solas. Have you ever had any interest in learning magic, Sarah? <laughs> Sarah, get off. Solas. While it has not manifested naturally, there are ways to determine whether arcane gifts lie dormant within you. Sarah, what? Don't make me think about that. I have to sleep at night. 
Solus, sleeping would give you the chance to explore the Fade. I could introduce you to spirits. Sarah, right, you're missing with me on purpose. Solus, why would I do that? It's not as though I know who filled my bedroll with lizards. Sarah, <laughs> fair point. That was pretty good. And I like this one because, yes, Solus is messing with Sarah and it's hilarious. But it just kind of weaves into all of these other clues, like Cole being like, your ears always point towards the fade, Sarah. Or Solus talking to Sarah about the breach and like, what color does it look like and all that. And I'm just, that is like one of the prime like grounds and inquisition like dialogue for like theorizing. And I just love all of the Sarah theories. And this just kind of weaves into that. Also, I love this. I'm so glad because this was actually on my list for one, but I was like a backup. And I love this one, one, because I just like the idea of like Solus waking up covered in lizards. <laughs> I think that that picture is just really funny to me. Um, but I also really love this from a lore perspective, because when you know who Solus is, like these are small glimpses of Fen Harrell, the trickster, Fen Harrell, the deceiver. And how it's just kind of, it just reads very like trickster God to me. And I really appreciate that. For sure. I just, I, I want to know what Sarah's deal is and I don't think we're going to find out in the next game, but we're not done with her. That's, I'm confident about that. I subscribe to the theory that she is Jenny, the original Jenny. My, I think whatever theories we have, like mystical, crazy, like, oh, this is like, she's the original Jenny or he's like might have some magic powers in it or anything goes against what the character really what her as sarah would want or she would think of herself as in my opinion she's a she wants to be down to a a person of the people not anything crazy on a pillar you know what i mean oh i totally agree but i think that's kind of where it could become very dramatic um the dramatic tension can come from her kind of realizing any number of things whether it's like oh she's andrewal and she just forgot or she's a hedge mage and has magic but never really did anything with it and just kind of actively suppresses that part of herself and i think it'll be kind of sad whenever that gets revealed and but i'm here for the pain or else i wouldn't be a fan of bioware games so 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 true um cool mac do you want to go next do you have another one to share uh sure i have one uh i have one more um it's one of my favorite uh, relationships like not romantic relationships but relationships in general in the series is between morgan and alistair because it starts out as pure hate and I think it's still kind of pure hate to an extent, but there's a, they have been through so much together. There is a familial kinship to them. And this is, this is the early hint of that in Origins. Morgan, have a carry eyes, Linga Alistair. I'm not going to do the voice. Screw that. <laughs> no. Uh, have a not carry eyes, Linga Alistair. Yes, well, don't worry. It's not what you think. Morgan, I see. I was looking at your nose. And what is it about my nose that captivates you so? Alistair, I was just thinking it looks exactly like your mother's. And Morgan, I hate you so much. Alistair, what? Never mind. That one is so iconic. I put that one on my list too. Um, and it just, you're right. It totally captures that like almost brother-sister dynamic that they have. Um, it also really points to, as we talk about, if you want more on this, uh, like, Alistair and Alistair's stupidity, but this points to the fact that Alistair plays innocent and naive on purpose because he's sitting there and he's like, oh, oh, you're going to like make fun of me? Well, I'm going to keep this thing that I, you might not told me, but I know you hate being compared to your mother, so I'm going to do it right now. Part of why I make him king, because if he can play those games, just wandering around in the woods, killing Darkspawn, he can handle 
the lands meet. It's not like he's going up against Orlais whole game every five minutes. He's got people for that. I would love to see Alistair play the game. Oh, there's this whole thing that I found on Pinterest a while back where it's like, say Alistair, and if you married him, Queen Kuzlin, go to like, ended up at the Winter Palace mask ball. And apparently they make it a competition to see who can show up and be more Ferelden and annoy the most Orlesians. <laughs> And it's a whole thing. And basically the queen wins because she just straight up brings from Mabari with her. He's like, damn, my wife won. Now I want the option to dance at the ball with my Mabari. Like to hold my Mabari like a baby and dance in the ball. I don't think that's ever going to happen for you. I'm sorry. It's not. I mean, there's, there's got to be a mod for something. Hey, if there's a mod for it, there's a mod for everything. If if you can romance Corypheus... You'll get your Mabari, Austin. There, that's a yeah, mod? That, <laughs> yeah, that it actually exists. What they do is they just replace the Cullen model with Corypheus. It's pretty hilarious. So you sway by the lake with Corypheus instead of Cullen. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. So, yes, uh, and there are two Corypheuses in haven when he attacks haven so it, it's pretty hysterical but i do have um one more quote as well and this was my backup one it's it's pretty funny too um and this is between cassandra and varick and so this happens right after their altercation about hawk and everything and so cassandra says varick i'm sorry about earlier with the table everything Varric says, I beg your pardon? I didn't catch that, Seeker. Cassandra says, I am sorry. And Varric says, oh, I'll mark this on my calendar. Cassandra had a feeling. And then Cassandra says, perhaps not that sorry. Just an iconic quote. Yeah, if you have extras, go ahead and, and shout it out, Lizzie. Okay, I love this one. It's like one of the first interactions that Varric and... Fenris have together. So here it is. I thought all dwarves had beards. Where's yours? I misplaced it, along with my sense of dwarven pride and my gold-plated noble cast pin. I thought maybe it fell onto your chest. Oh, the broody elf tells a joke. I don't brood. Friend, if your brooding were any more impressive, women would swoon as you passed. They'd have broody babies in your honor. You're a very odd dwarf. And you thought I was joking about the pit. Iconic. Literally all my favorite lines. <laughs> it's a great one. It is a great one. Uh, I do have another one that is, I actually recently discovered in my most recent playthrough of Dragon Age 2. Um, but it is just a very painstakingly like slap in the face between Aveline and Carver. And... So Carver basically says, did you approve my application to be a guard? And Aveline is like, I don't handle the new recruits, Carver. And he goes, well, why would they deny me? And Aveline goes, well, you're rash, you're stubborn, you don't work well with others, and you only really care about yourself. Carver, you told them not to take me, didn't you? Aveline, yes. And she's right for that. I would have done the same thing. But I was just like, oh, and this was right after a conversation where Carver said that he hated Varric. And then I was just like, what? Who hates Varric? Because Varric makes fun of him for looking like Hog. I will, I will say there, I think of that same one. They end at the end, they're like, drink Slater. They're, they're all friends. It's just the level of how they show their friendship is weird. Aveline isn't being, she isn't trying to be hurtful to Carver. She knows Carver. She spent a year with Carver and she just has the feeling and confidence to be truthful with him. Which Carver yeah, resents because he's just like, I don't need another older sibling telling me what to do. Right. And so also because- Aveline is... Aveline is Hawk's friend, not Carver's friend. And for a person who like 
hates their older sibling and wants to live outside of their shadow, like he probably doesn't want to be chastised and reprimanded by his sibling's friends either, you know? Yes. Um, well, we are nearing eight o'clock. So unless anybody has anything else to add, I think Austin, we can go around and let people plug whatever they want to plug. All right. Well, we'll go backwards this time and we'll start with uh, Capricorn. Yep. Uh, I'm Capricorn Tower. I'm pretty active on the Discord. Uh, first off, thank you guys for having me. This has been super fun. Um, I'm Macman813 on the Discord. I haven't been super active, but I'm hoping to be more active on the Discord soon. Uh, like I said, thanks for having me. I am LVCC13 or Lizzie, and you can find me on the Discord, and you can also find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash LVCC13, where I stream right now because I have no time because I teach tiny humans. I am streaming Dragon Age and Mass Effect. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your support on Patreon. A special thank you to our Nug King patron, Lewis H., who gets another special thank out at the end of this show. And thank you all for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. We will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. You can find us on Twitter at DA Lorecast. If you have any lore questions, topics to unpack, or side character suggestions, join our Cups Podcasting and More Discord server. It's easily the best place on the internet. You can also support us financially through our Patreon. You can find us there on patreon.com slash Dragon Age Lorecast. The Dragon Age Lorecast is part of the Robots Radio Network. For more information about the Robots Radio Network, join the Discord server via the link in our episode description. If you enjoyed the show or learned something new today, please subscribe, leave us a review, and join the Patreon. And if you enjoyed our intro and outro music, give a big thank you to Pipe Man Studios. Thank you, Pipe Man. Thanks again for listening to the Dragon Age Lorecast. We'll see you next time. How well do you know your video game lovers? Have you ever wondered how your video game bays stack up against all the other delectable digital dates? I'm Genesis, the girl whose motto in life is love, laugh, tequila. And on Two Girls, One Ship, we analyze, rate, and review all that the world of video game romances has to offer. And I'm Vervada, the hopeless romantic cat lady and lifelong gamer. But you should know that our podcast centers on character and romance analysis and doesn't shy away from exploring the fun of physical connection. Or from the deep emotional connections built between two characters, using specific in-game dialogue and the overall narrative journey. So join the two girls, one ship, shipsters, and remember, beauty is in the eye of the controller.